Mark 9, 49 through 50. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we love you and thank you, Lord, for loving us. Father, we thank you for loving us and sending your son Jesus to be born of a virgin, Lord, and living a sinless life, Lord, Lord, that he might go to Calvary's cross for our sins. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence with us today, and we thank you for this opportunity to share in this beautiful place that you've given us to share your word and, and the instruments, Lord, in which you give us, Lord, that we can spread it throughout the world. And we just pray that you are honored, you are glorified in all that is said and done this morning. For it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Again, we're going to continue our thoughts with the words of Jesus uh, that we started 62 messages ago. And as you look in the scriptures at the red letter words and where we're at today, again, Jesus is walking the streets. He's uh, feeding the multitudes. He's calming storms. He's healing the sick. He's walked on water. And to get to the, and he's doing all of this that he might teach us and teach his disciples things. And to get to the context that we want to read this morning, I first want to remind you of what's been taking place in the context of the Word of God because we need to always keep things in perspective as where it's taking place. It's right after his 12 disciples had had an argument, which was the greatest of the kingdom. And Jesus scolded them by saying in Mark 9, 35, if anyone desires to be first, he shall be last and all and servant of all. And then John, there in Mark 39, 38, he, he was feeling convicted of what Jesus was saying. So he, changed, he tried to change the subject and he says, teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name and we forbade him because he does not follow us and Jesus said to them do not forbid him for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me for he who is not against us is on our side for whosoever gives us a cup of water to drink in my name because of you belong to Christ, surely I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. And then Jesus made a very strong statement. I'm just going to paraphrase it this morning instead of reading the whole thing, but it's found in Mark 9, 42 through 48. He says, but whosoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him that a millstone be hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your feet causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, cut, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes and to be cast into hell's fire. For where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. You see, again, as we just shorten that up and there's things in this life that we get attached to. There may be uh, addictions, uh, things we begin to let become part of our life that really shouldn't become a part of our life because it affects others in a negative way. And what is he saying? He's saying uh, when you find that you're having a negative effect and hurting others by your things that you have found important in your life, you need to do whatever it is to straighten that out. Cut that out. Get on with it. But that leads us, because right after he said that, he continued is what we want to look at today in Mark 9, 49. He didn't take a breath. He just continued without hesitation. And he says in verse 49, For everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourself and have peace with one another. So he is basically saying to us today that those that are living for Christ, most of us already know this, walking with and living for the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all, is awesome to know that he is with us through all things. But it does not come without testing and trials of fire in this world. There's going to be some uh, places that we're going to have to take a stand. There's going to be persecution because of the life that you try to live when you live for Christ. So the fires are co yet going to come. Yet it is in the coming through the fire that the world can see, they can begin to see, they can begin to feel, they can begin to taste 
what we are truly made of. And we would say in this scripture today, as he referred to as salt, we are made of salt. The world needs salt today. You see, Dr. James Stewart, a great British preacher, once said, the greatest threat to Christianity is not communism, it's not atheism, it's not materialism, and it's not humanism. The greatest threat to Christianity is Christians trying to sneak into heaven incognito without ever sharing their faith, without ever living out the Christian life, without ever becoming involved in the most significant work of God and what he is doing here on this planet. So that brings us to say, the Lord told us that we should have salt. We should be the salt. We should be the light uh, in the world. Matter of fact, in Matthew 5, 13 through 16, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. But uh, we're focusing on the salt part this morning. What does salt do? We know that salt does uh, about four different things. First of all, it preserves. In the old times, they used it to preserve their meat and they'd put it away before they had freezers. And, and so we know it helps preserve. We also know salt changes the taste of that which it touches. And it also, if you get too much of it, it will make you thirsty and it can raise your blood pressure. So what salt do? It changes that which it touches. It affects the in a, 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 a positive way, you could say. And so, if you think today that in your life you're insignificant, you're not. You see, uh, if you're a Christian, our life is what others see. They see us for who we are, and we can make a difference in this world just by living a life that they can see that he is in us and he and we are in him. I heard a man about a man walking through the county fair and he met a little girl with a big and she was carrying a giant or a big old thing of cotton candy and on the stick and and you almost couldn't see the little girl for the cotton candy in front of her and he said to her he said how can a little girl like you eat all that cotton candy and she said to him well I'm really much bigger on the inside than I am on the outside so, and we are, when the Lord is in us and we are in him, remember that's what the Bible teaches, we are more powerful, we are bigger than we are on the outside because he is with us. You see, and also, we're a miracle. And he, that's why he referred to us as salt too. Salt is a miracle within itself. As you know, it's a chemically composed, uh, a chemical composed of sodium, and chloride. Uh, now, if you try to pour hydrogen chloride acid on your hand, it, your hand will be burned immediately, right? And if you try to drink the uh, hydrochloride, you would die, an uh, agonizing death. But when you add sodium to hydrogen chloride, you have salt which as most people know, taking anything, any kind of a chemical class in school is the most common useful substance on the planet. It is so useful when it's put together. And it's one, and again, it, one of the things we said it does is preserve. Our world is decaying around us. The world is rotting out from under us. Um, you can just look at the news every day and you can tell that and, and look around us a lot of times as you travel. So it is our job as a salt to preserve the holiness of God and the goodness of Jesus as much as we can. So just imagine, can you think how bad things would be if there were no churches in this world. Just think how bad things would be if there were no Christians. How bad things would be if there were no Bibles that give us guidance and direction. Even how bad things would be if there were no preachers of the gospel sharing. It would be bad because there would be no direction. The law would be useless. So. You see, salt in itself is a great thing. 
but there is a danger, as we mentioned earlier. Jesus goes on to say in Matthew 5, 13, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? So now any chemistry teacher would tell you that it's impossible in a way for salt to become unsalty. Because sodium chloride is one of the most stable compounds in all the universe. It does not change. It never loses its character. But there is truth in what Jesus is saying. You see, much of the salt that was used in Palestine, and that's where he was at at this time, came from the Dead Sea, which is one more than a mile and a half below sea level. So the waters there, the Dead Sea, the, come from, first of all, the Sea of Galilee, the water of the Sea of Galilee flow into the Jordan River, and then from there to the Dead Sea, basically to the bottom of the earth. And once the water gets there, there's no place for it to go, because that's what makes the Dead Sea the Dead Sea. It has an inlet, but it has no outlet. And what, the thing, it makes it very different than any other place. So once it gets there, the water is there, the sun is hot, and it begins to evaporate and leaves behind a chunky white powder made up of a combination of salt and other minerals. So that powdery content, that powdery stuff there, uh, has enough salt in it that the people uses it to flavor their soup. The people use it uh, for the things that most of us use salt for. But it comes from the Dead Sea and actually because it is mixed with minerals, it's not pure sodium chloride. And it's possible with the dampness in the air that the salt there will be dissolved and basically be dissipated. And when that happens, the salt there loses its seasoning. So it's really not good for nothing anymore because of what takes place there. So what does that have to do with you and me? <clears throat> well, the worst thing that could happen to a Christian is not to lose his health. The worst thing that can happen to a Christian is not to lose his job or his wealth or even his family. Actually, the worst thing that can happen happen to a Christian is not even to lose his life. The worst thing that can happen to a Christian is to lose their testimony. Because when we lose our testimony, your salt loses its seasoning. It's, it loses its flavor. It loses its effectiveness. Remember the great commission that the Lord gave us was to go out and so that's salting the earth, that's making a difference, touching people with our lives so that they can see Christ in us and that he can be glorified. So remember the purpose of salt? If you are truly a follower of Christ, been born again, then we want to be like Christ. That's what the word Christian means. It, it means to be like Christ. Those that knew Christ back in the day that he was walking here upon the earth, and after he left, other people came that was his disciples and his followers, and they began to mock them and make fun of them. And actually the word Christian was a, a slang word to put them down because they saw them as little Christes. So they called them Christians and making fun of them. But that's what Christians should be. We should be like little Christ. People should be affected by us in the way that salt affects things that it touches. It preserves, again, it changes the taste the matter. It makes one thirsty for what that which they have and even raises the blood pressure. Some people get aggravated. Some people get mad. Yes, change that because then it begins to open their mind. It begins to make them think. So what does Jesus tell us to do again? The Great Commission is in Matthew 28. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to deserve all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you e even to the end of the age. Amen. He is telling us to do the things salt does, right? To preserve, change the taste, make those thirsty for it, raise the blood pressure a little bit. He is telling us to be like Christ 
himself when he was here. I close with this little story. A Sunday school teacher was talking to his class and he showed the class his watch and he held it up and he said, what is this for? And the kid says, to tell time. And he said to them, well, suppose the watch doesn't tell time. What's it good for? And I got a couple back there in the RV I just haven't got rid of. They don't sell time. But what are they good for? Nothing. And that's what the kid said. They're good for nothing. So he then took a pencil and he held it up and he said to them, what's this pencil for? And they said, for writing. He said, well, if it doesn't write, what is it good for? They said, nothing. It's good for nothing. Then he took a knife out and he said, boys, what is this for? And they said, it's for cutting things. And he said, suppose it won't cut anything. What is it good for? And they said, it is good for nothing. The teacher then looked at the class and he said to them, boys, whatever else you do, if you do not glorify God by the way you live and bring others to glorify God, then what are you good for? What are we good for? And they said, good for nothing. You know, we are to be the salt. So the question I'm asking this morning is, how is your relationship with the Son of God? How's your faith? Are you salty? Are you affecting others positively for Christ who gave his all for you that you could have eternal life? Again, we come to this time, then we want to ask you, if they're here to spend some time with us afterwards, those that are on the internet, uh, there's numbers to call us or emails and Facebook there, you can contact us and our website, and we would love to share with you how you can know and the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can become a little salty yourself. Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all of us are sinners but we find in Romans 5 8 that even though we were sinners and uh, God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were sinners Christ died for us he had to do that because as he shared in Romans 6 23 the wages of the sin that we are is death but the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ how do you receive that gift? In Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Do you have a relationship with the Lord? We pray that you do. And we love to hear also how God is working in your life. It's good to talk to others who know the Lord Jesus Christ. So feel free to always share with us what God is doing, your prayer request, and that we can honor him together and live each day as if Christ died yesterday, he arose this morning, and he's coming back tomorrow. Father, we thank you for this time. Again, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord, the coolness in the air, Lord. We just thank you for your blessing. Things. And we pray that you are glorified, that you are honored. And we thank you for those who have come to be with us, to take this time to encourage us this morning here in this park. And we just pray that you would bless them and bless those who will receive this through the Internet. For it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.